Hey everybody, I had no time before Shabbat to give over some words of Torah in Ari's memory, but um, I wanted to take a few minutes now, even though the Sabbath has ended here in Israel, still take advantage of the opportunity to share some Torah messages with all of you, and again, to, in a way to keep Ari's memory alive and keep the Torah that he believed in alive and the messaging that he believed in alive. So forgive me, I was not able to do a video uh, Torah talk on Friday, Erev Shabbat. We are here celebrating with the family, and um, so I had no time whatsoever, so here I am. I will do a nice, quick Torah message, and I think it is perfect, perfect message that goes for Ari, what he lived for, what he stood for, who he was. All right, the parsha is Vayishlach, and he sent. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Jacob, Yaakov, Vayishlach. Here we go. Vayishlach Yaakov malachim lefanav elisav achiv arza seir sedeidon. And Yaakov and Jacob sent before him three messengers to Esav, his brother in the land of Seir, in the fields of Edom. And he commands them, saying, Jacob commands the messengers, saying, This is what you should say to the master Esav. He's calling, he's calling his brother Esav the master. Why? This is what you should tell Esav. You are serving Jacob. What do you mean you're serving? It's his brother. But this is how he's talking. I lived with Lavan, right? Our, 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 our family member, our uncle. And I've been late, I've been there until now. Right? Last you saw me, last you saw your master Jacob, your brother Jacob. He was single, he was alone. Now he comes back with oxen, with, with, uh, with sheep, with donkeys. With maid servants, with 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 help, and I'm sending you with this message in order to find favor in his eyes. What's going on here? Jacob is returning to his homeland. What's he doing? This whole big thing for his brother Esau, sending messengers with this message, and Jacob, Jacob, your servant. Jacob was his brother. Why is he telling him to talk this way to, to his brother Esau? Remember, in last week's Torah portion, Jacob ran for his life, right? Jacob, he took the birthright from Esau. I mean, Esau sold it to him, but Jacob took it. Then he took the birthright blessing, and Esau was livid at him. Esau said, I'm going to kill you. And Yaakov's mother told him to run for your life. And she said, go to my brother. Go stay with him until things calm down. So Yaakov is now coming back to his home, coming back to the land of Israel, afraid of what Esau might do to him, afraid that Esau will kill him, because that's what he said, I'm going to kill you. And he's trying to be as nice as possible and, 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 and try to get as much favor in his brother's eyes as possible. And as we read further on, Esau ended up greeting him with an army of 400 soldiers, meaning that Esau was actually thinking of coming out and killing Jacob and his whole family. What do I want to focus upon? I want to focus about Jacob, right? Keeping Ari's memory alive, keeping Ari's legacy alive. Where was Jacob? Jacob was in the land of Haran. Jacob was with his uncle. Jacob got married. He got married to Leah. He got married to Rachel, to Rachel. He got married to Bilhah, to Zilpah. He had 12 children. Jacob was a successful farmer, a successful businessman for those days. His uncle was jealous of him. When he left, his uncle didn't want to let him take all of his sheep that he had developed in his flock over the years. Jacob was a successful, successful man living outside the land of Israel. Not only was he a successful man, he was afraid of his brother. He was afraid of returning to his homeland, to his home, because his brother said he was going to kill him. And yet, Jacob returns to the land of Israel. He returns. He had every reason to stay out of the land of Israel. He had every reason to stay in Haran. He was a successful businessman. Why leave? Everything's going well. He has a wonderful, beautiful family, four wives, 12 children, successful business, successful farm. Why leave? Everything's great in Haran. He doesn't have to come back to the land of Israel. And in addition to that, 
We see how afraid he is of coming home. His brother wanted to kill him. He should stay outside. He should stay in Haran. He doesn't have to worry about his brother. What message am I trying to give to all of you? Think of it today. There are plenty of Jews who live outside the land of Israel today. And they're very successful. Some are more successful than others, but they're successful. They don't, they don't want to pick up and come back to the land of Israel. And on the other hand, there's dangers in the land of Israel. We have enemies here. We have our Muslim neighbors who are always trying to kill us, always trying to destroy us. For over 100 years, they're trying to kill us and destroy the state of Israel even before it came to be in existence, and they don't stop. And every few years, it's a different, it's a different challenge. It's a different threat. Sometimes it's from Iraq, and other times it's from Syria. Then it's from some fake nation who self-identifies Palestinians. Then it's Iran, right? Sometimes it was Egypt. Then it's Gaza, right? We have all these enemies, and every few years it changes who the main enemy is. But the bottom line is there is always a danger. There is always a danger. Jacob did not allow his success from stopping him from wanting to return to his homeland, Israel. Jacob did not allow the danger of his brother wanting to kill him from stopping him from coming home to the land of Israel, to his homeland. So too, Ari returned to his homeland. His father and his family was very successful, successful uh, um, Jewish educator in America. Ari came back here. He had a full life ahead of him in America. But at the age of 17, 18, he came here on his own to live here and, ho- and, and set up his family here. My family, again, my father, my family was very successful also in, in Jewish education. And he was needed and a very respected uh, Jewish principal in America. Communities wanted him for their, for their communities, for their schools. And my parents picked up and brought us here to come home to the land of Israel. I remember my, fa- my father's unbelievable line that I tell people all the time. My, fa- my parents decided to come make Aliyah, come to Israel in 1990. That was the year of the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, right? Iraq invaded Kuwait, and everyone knew that America was going to uh, go into Iraq to save Kuwait. Everyone knew a war was coming. And my parents were planning to move here. And all of our friends were telling us, oh, don't go to Israel. Wait until after the war. Right? It's dangerous. There are wars about to break out. A big war in the Middle East. Don't go. And I remember my father's line. I always repeat this and I will never forget it. My father's answer to everyone was, there is always a reason not to go back home to the land of Israel. We decided we're going and we're going. We're not letting any other reason stop us. And we came. We didn't let an, a, a, an eventual war that actually happened. And we were here for that war stop us from returning to our homeland to live here. Just like Jacob and Ari and my family and so many other families, every other Jewish family must learn as well. Be like Jacob. Do not allow success or complacency living abroad in the exile stop you from coming home. Do not let the dangers with our enemies here stop you from coming home. We are supposed to be here. This is the land of Israel. This is our home. This is where the Jewish people are supposed to be in order to make a great impact upon the whole world, upon all of humanity. So all you Jews out there, come home. Be like Jacob. Be like Ari. And for all you people who are not Jews, visit Israel. Come here and see the miracles of Israel and the Jewish people with your own eyes and support Israel in every way you can. We just had a beautiful Shabbat here in the land of Israel, so I'm now going to wish you a beautiful, wonderful, safe, and healthy week to each and every one of, uh, every one of you. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, everyone. From the ancestral Jewish homeland of the Jewish people, take care.